tweaked a few things. She closed your browser, etc. Only have OBS open, one thing. Okay, so that kind of, that makes a lot more sense. So if I just close everything else down as well, hopefully that resolves everything. need this to do this is it any better now guys this must be super frustrating I'm really like super sorry about this and Nigel I'm very well good you're leveling stuff up what stuff are you leveling up okay I'm just gonna close this because I can okay and Hibiki following me excellent I think one thing is as well, Habiki, like I'm currently uploading a video to our um, our Google Drive, so that's probably not helping. Holly Ethan, hi, how are you doing? Right, guys, is the stream, is the stream, I can watch you clearly now, mate. So the stream's all right then, great. Okay, so I've kind of closed pretty much everything else down, so excellent, that is perfect. Hopefully, uh, MBL stuff is all uploaded so that I can just double check that actually and then I can actually close this down it's complete so Alex I can relay the message to you right here right now it is up ready for you right guys thanks for bearing with me and uh, sorry it's been a bit of um, it's been a bit awkward kind of getting this started hopefully the lagging's all stopped now but um, we're ready to go Polythin has now followed me Excellent, and who else now? The bell keeps ringing. Buffy, no, Buffy. Buffy, hey, thanks for following. Right, let's jump into some games. So we're just gonna play some Battle Spot doubles today. Um, we're gonna continue playing with the um, the team that we uh, created on the live stream team, kind of. Um, and Jory is now hosting, thank you very much, Jory. Um, so we created this team a few weeks ago um on our live team building stream um and it's been great since we put it together i've had a lot of fun with it um i think like we said at the start when we were kind of getting um to grips with um the team we do a review uh team episode at some point so we might look at doing that like next week and look at doing some changes for the team and where we can kind of maybe look to just make some alterations to kind of make our matchups a bit better Sola, hi, how are you doing? Excellent, and I'm pleased the stream is not lagging anymore. So we have our first opponent, and they're running a team of, let's have a look, this is pretty interesting. So we've got Garchomp, Tapu Lele, Volcarona, Pachurisu, Persian, and Oracorio. So, what are we gonna do? Sola. You're following. Excellent. That's awesome, mate. So what we're going to do against this team, Pachirisu is obviously a bit um, of an issue with the follow me support there, especially the Rage Powder as well from the Volcarona. We've got Fake Out support from the Persian. Oracorio and Volcarona can do Quiver Dance stuff together, so that's something we have to keep in mind. I feel like Tyranitar here is going to be like really good in a trip room. We have to be a bit careful for the Garchomp, obviously, um, with its Earthquakes that can hit... Excadrill and Titor for decent damage. Um, and Lele is going to be a bit of a pain for Titor as well. I mean, we could go here. Yeah, it could be Mega Chomp. Yeah. To be honest, it would, wouldn't surprise me if it was Mega Chomp, to be honest. Um, hmm. Let's see. Uh, and who's this? Leonard is following. Hi. We're running out of time so quickly. Let's quickly just dive into this. Um, so let's go Excadrill, Tita. Um, run out of time. Run out of time. <laughs> Good start. Good start. <laughs> we'll be fine though. We've got our sand core leading, so it should be all right. And there was no item on Patchy, Nigel. Oh, that's it. That is interesting. So we've got, yeah, we've got Guardi and we've got Zapdos. That's not the worst thing in the world. Did we need him on top? I don't think we probably needed him on top here. I think our sand's probably like the most important thing going into it. So, right, let's see. We see the lead, Oracorio Volcarona. So 
Our lead's pretty decent here, to be honest. We can just ro double rock slide. Um, I don't really see any reason not to either. So we'll just go for that. There's no wide guard coming out from my opponent. Might um, switch things up here, but they're like in pretty deep water with the, the double rock slide. Volcaron is going to probably go down to one rock slide if it's got Sash even. Um, but we see the Charty Berry, so it is going to get through one rock slide, but I don't know if they're going to be able to get through double rock slide. And we get super lucky because the Volcarona actually flinches, so it's not going to be able to get the Quiver Dance off. And we're just going to... This is pretty straightforward, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know why you would lead that against um, a Sand Core. Because if it, the lead comes out, I mean, what do you do against it? Like, this will happen. The thing is, that Revelation Dance still wouldn't have done too much. Um, even if you've got the Quiver Dance boost. So I don't really... Like, the flinch was pretty, you know, fortunate. We could have maybe seen a Bug Buzz or a Z-Bug Buzz come out from that Volcarona, which wouldn't have been ideal. But um, at the same time... I don't, I don't get the, I don't get the, the lead there. So you see my opponent now. They're bringing in the Garchomp Tapu Lele. Um, our options here are we, we've got Iron Head on Extra Drill, but it's maybe a bit too obvious to go for the Iron Head onto the Tapu Lele right now. So I'm kind of tempted just to protect the Extra Drill maybe, um, and go for an Ice Beam with Tita onto the Garchomp. I think that's what I'll do. Because it's likely that the Lele might protect here, but I don't know. Yeah, so the Lele does protect, so we kind of call that right. So that's good. Probably see an Earthquake come out. But Tito should should take this. Should take it. Let's see. Tito takes it. So we're going to get the Ice Beam off, which is pretty nice. This should... I don't know if this will kill. Oh, God, Tron. No, it's very close, so it's putting it into Earthquake range, which is the main thing. We can just Earthquake this next turn, because we know we're going to be outspeeding the Garchomp. We'll take T-Tar out, because I guess the Sand Storm will be coming to an end soon. And we'll just bring in Zapdos, so we can get a free Earthquake off, which would be pretty nice. So, out of you guys here, anyway, um, while we're going through this match, have you guys, any of you, you I know some of you have been playing the team, but, like, um, how have you been finding it, if you have been playing it? So we bring in the Zapdos here, there's the Earthquake, this should take down the Garchomp and do a good chunk to the Lele. Yeah, so... Nah, don't apologise, the messages are, are fine. I can see the, the live chat anyway, so um, outside of what's on the on the, the actual the video link, so that's fine. Yori, you were telling me about a team that you were playing with. Is it Whimsicott that you were playing in the, the Battle Spot Double series? That sounded really cool. We should um, we should have a explore that at some point, I think. I do like Wimmy. And it's weird because we haven't really played it at all. Um, even on the, the VGC, uh, like School of Hard Knocks or anything like that. So it'd be interesting to take into Battle Spot Doubles. We'll just finish up here with an Earthquake. And if Zapdos is lucky, it might get an, a, a T-Ball off. But I don't think it's going to. And good game to my opponent. That was pretty straightforward. But nice and quick, I guess. But just shows as well how strong the that sand lead is, you know, T-Tar Extra Drill is such a kind of an easy call to put into your team and um, it's so devastating if you let it get carried away, so it's, it's super nice. We've got another follower, who have we got? Magical Wizard, excellent, how are you doing? That's brilliant. Um, so, we will, um, would you like to save the battle video? Nah, no one wants to see that again, I don't think. Right, we'll look for another opponent. Just keep the same music on. So, Daniel, what you say? Uh, Yuri. Oh yeah, Tickle Fake Tears Whimsicott. Yeah. Super strong. It's good. And Daniel, I won the third turn of the tournament with this team with... There you go. 
Oh, and their results are 2 now. Oh, excellent. That's great news, Daniel. So the, your tournament's going really well at the minute. Is it a weekly one that you're playing? Because I saw the replays from last week, and you, you did super well. Um, so you're having a really good warm, uh, good run with it. That's great. And yeah, Nils, good warm-up match. Let's hopefully it continues. Have you watched the battle videos I sent you on Facebook? No, I bet I haven't had a chance to uh, catch up with them yet. I'm super sorry, mate. I've been like absolutely stacked busy like this whole week's been a bit of a nightmare r4 cool hi thanks for following sorry i'm probably butchering your username um i'm pretty bad with but with usernames and stuff like that so um we've got our next opponent anyway uh they're running a team of tyranitar amungus chrysalia heatran landerus theory and form and tapulele so this kind of really shouts out a lot like early 2015 kind of teams that you kind of see going around um obviously discounting the tapu lele there because it wasn't around back then um so we've got a, a, a decent trick room mode with the amoongus um t-tar there i would imagine is probably um a trick room pokemon you've got the heatran it's just generally good with cresselia you can always skill swap it so that's something we need to be aware of Landorus with the Intimidate and Lele. I wonder if it's Scarfed. Kind of might be Scarfed. I don't know. What are we going to lead against this team? Hmm. We could go Sand again, to be honest. Like, I don't really... There's obviously the Landorus is a bit of an issue. Um, but we could always bring... I don't know if I really want to go Trick Room this match. That's the thing. We could always bring him on top in the back. And go Guardi. I think we'll go with those four. Sorry, I'm not keeping up with the the the, uh, the chat either. You're going to be heading any events like Bremen, um, Mad Captain? No, I'm I'm not going to be going to Bremen, but I will be hopefully in Bilbao. So that would be good. And I think there's um, from all the special events, so I'll be in London as well, uh, which would be really cool. But I think there's a special event in Milan. Which I'll hopefully be at, and then there's the Dream Hack I think in Leipzig as well, um, in January. So I'll definitely be in Leipzig in January. Uh, really looking forward to them as well. So it'll be it'll be really good. What about yourself? Have you got anything coming up soon? Let me know. I'm I'd like I'd love to hear what people's plans are for the new season. It's super nice having um, the, the, all the events schedules kind of like come out like really early this year especially for Europe so we see my opponent lead off with the Tyranitar Amoongus huh. what are we going to go with we could just go we could tech rage into the Amoongus I don't know if it's a bit risky doing that though um, hmm let's think could rock slide their Tito is probably faster than ours though that's the, that's the other thing I mean could just rock slide and tech rage into the Amoongus. It's not a bad idea. And at least we get rid of the Amoongus then. There's always the risk of the Amoongus switching out though. Um, but I've locked in now. So let's see what happens. So that's fine. The T Toss switches out. So we'll get the Intimidate off, which isn't ideal. But we'll see if a combination of tech rage and maybe a rock slide is enough as long as this amoongus isn't holding a super berry we should be able to to take it down so we'll see Let's see what we got in the chat yeah and ahmed i will definitely 100 percent tomorrow i've got a, a bit more free time so i'll definitely catch up with those videos and stuff like that the team looks awesome by the way and that tectonic rage is nowhere near enough so we're going to be praying for a flinch here, really. But now nah, we don't get it. And probably rightfully so. So Excadrill is going to take a nap. We are heavily threatened from this uh, Landorus as well. And it's kind of wasteful, I, I think, a bit tech raging into the Amoongus there when, you know, with the Intimidate. Because now it's got the probably got the Regenerator ability. So it can just switch out quite easily and heal back some of that health, which is not ideal i'm gonna switch excadrill out get the intimidate on the landerus i've got fake out support that next turn and i'm gonna just protect tyranitar this turn round so hopefully this kind of works out 
Sorry guys as well. I'm kind of trying to concentrate on the chat and the, the battle as well. So it's... My brain is frying. But no, it's fine. Um, so... Focus on winning. Yeah, I need to. <laughs> Yuri, I really hope you can go to... Um, if you can't go to Bremen, I really hope you can make London. London will be such an amazing event. It was so good last year. I got actually really like... I was really unwell at London last year. I played like the first day. And um, I had to leave early. I was like super like not well at all. So it was really unfortunate. I didn't even get to finished the Swiss and day one I think they got to like round eight and then I had to leave uh, which was a bit of a shame and so I didn't really get to enjoy hardly any of the weekend with anyone so I'm really looking forward to this this year and kind of getting to hang out and enjoy the whole event with everyone so yeah right back to the battle we see the Moongus protect we are going to see an earthquake come out from the Landorus which is fine because I like this because we get the Intimidate onto the, onto the Landorus we're going to activate our eject button, so this means that we're going to get a uh, God of War in, which is super nice, and we put a lot of pressure on that Amoongus um, from the word go, and the, the, the Landorus as well, really. I mean, it can U-turn out, um, which it probably will do, and we definitely don't really want to set up Trick Room now. I mean, we could set up a Trick Room now, because we could Ice Beam into the Amoongus, that would, should take it down. And then just go for a Shrick Room. I think that's not a bad play. I mean, what's my opponent got on the back? We know they've got the Tyranitar. Um, huh. And I wonder if it does that speed. It probably, uh, I don't know if it under speeds my God of War. That's the only issue. Hmm. I think what I'm going to do is actually just preserve Tito for the minute. Actually, no, I won't. I'm going to go for that Ice Beam onto the Amoongus. And I'm just going to go for a Trick Room, yeah. I think we'll go with what we initially said. That might help us out a bit, so. Hey, Becky, I would totally do Bremen if it wasn't literally the farthest. I remember speaking to you about it. It's like, you said it was like a... A 20 like hour bus ride or something ridiculous like that like man I know, I know I said to you like I take a like if I had to get the bus from Bristol where I live to Liverpool I think it would take me like six hours and that's bad enough so 20 hours is just just too long man too long right we're gonna see an earthquake come up from the Landorus the Ice Beam's going to finish off the Amoongus, and we will get the Trick Room up, which is quite nice, because the Amoongus is, like, the only thing, I think, really stopping us from going for the Trick Room full-on initially. So, we do get the Trick Room up. It all depends on what this, um, this Tyranitar in the back, how it's EV'd. If it's fast, I think we'll be alright, but if not, then it's going to be a bit iffy. Yeah. So, we'll see what my opponent brings in now. But we can safely get rid of the, the Landorus this next turn, which isn't too bad, I guess. So we'll see. Oh, it's a Tapu Lele. So we're definitely going to be outspeeding Lele here. Huh. Hmm. And what do we do here? Tito, we can go for Rock Slide and... Hyper Voice, that should be enough to take down the Landorus at least. I don't know if it's going to be enough to take down the Lele though. But let's just lock in with it. So the Landorus withdraws. Tyranitar coming in. Which I don't mind at all because, I mean, the Hyper Voice is going to be doing really good damage. There's always a chance that we can flinch the Lele as well. Which we never really want to go for, but we'll see how much this Hyper Voice does. It's going to be doing a Good chunk to both Pokemon. Lele is quite specially defensively bulky. Oh, it just survives, so it's a bit unfortunate. We do see a Shadow Ball come out from the Lele, but that's fine. I mean, this next turn we're going to be able to... We'll just bring in Hit on top. We've got Feint. We've got Fake Out. Um, the Lele is going to go down regardless because of the sand damage. And we're putting a lot of pressure onto the T-Tar anyway, so we should be alright kind of closing this up. And sorry guys, I, I'm not meaning to ignore the chat at all. I will catch up with it in between. 
And Nils, yes, I will uh, hopefully, hopefully, all things going well, be in Bilbao. Um, I just need to get all this, the, my time off from work sorted and um, yeah, hopefully I should be in Bilbao, which is really cool. And I think Chris is definitely 100% coming to Bilbao as well, which is the, which would be really cool because he's been out of the, the scene for a long time and he's, he's looking to get right back into it. So um, it should be good. And I know you're going, right? What's everyone saying? There's too much chat. No, there's the, the chat's great. I have water in the rest. There's <laughs> orange. What is that? Orange water. Okay. Oh, I just totally forgot that we can't use fake out in the psychic terrain. Ah. But it's fine because Landorus isn't on the ground, so we do get to use it. It's fine. <laughs> we get away with it slightly. But that's fine. I'm trying to figure out what the orange water is about. I don't know, like, I just saw the end comment. What is this about orange water? Is this you, Hibiki? Okay, so we see my opponent bring in the Tito and they've got the Landorus. I think here we can just safely go for an Ice Beam onto the Landorus and go for a close combat into the Tito. And we should be able to lock up the game here. It kind of all depends on this T-Tar. If it's minimum speed T-Tar, it could throw a few spanners in the work, but I I don't know. I don't think from... Like we initially said in, in the team preview that it could be part of the, the trick room mode of my opponent's team. But the T-Tar just protects here, so we'll get this Ice Beam off onto the Landorus. It should pick up the kill. And then him on top can do the rest, which would be pretty nice. So somehow managed to get through this one as well. So that's all right. All right. Let me catch up with the chat now a little bit. So. Leave me out of the orange water story. All right. <laughs> I don't want to know. Do I want to know? It sounds kind of interesting, I guess. At the same time, it sounds a little bit gross. Yeah, okay. I went home from class trip and I bus broke down me to wait seven hours for a new bus to the gas station in Czech Republic where the water was orange. Ah, right, okay. The, or the water was orange. Oh man, did, you, did anyone drink it? Like, I don't know if I'd be drinking orange water. If it was Fanta, maybe. I don't drink sodas or anything like that, but if it's thirsty, I'd drink it. But not orange water, that's kind of a little bit gross. Yeah. I had a really, like, I know um, a friend of mine uh, did a lot of traveling over in India, and um, he was talking to me about, like, he'd take these big train journeys um, between cities and things where he, where he was going, and um, he was telling me that like this mad 12 hour train ride that he was on and he, he had no water and they pulled up at this this station in the middle of nowhere and it was it was like literally an abandoned station and um, there was this big like water vat thing that was just sitting outside I guess collecting like rainwater or something and he said he was so thirsty he ran out and he just turned this nozzle and just drank and drank and drank all this water and um, I don't know how he didn't get ill from it. He did get like dysentery though, I think, like a few weeks later. But I don't think it was from the water, but like, you've got to be so careful with water. It's weird. And I can't believe we're talking about water right now. Well, let's get off the subject of water. So, yes, excited to watch Worlds, but I'm a bit bored of playing VGC at the minute. Yeah, I'm really excited for Worlds. I'm really excited to kind of see what comes out of um, the, the format because it's a, it is like the kind of the, the big the big event where everyone kind of pulls out their big ideas they've maybe kept ideas back for most of the season and they kind of pull them out for this big event so it's always nice to see and you always it's nice to see which player can kind of outsmart everyone else with them you know there's always sometimes you get lucky with metagame calls and things like that but generally the teams at worlds are always 
like really cool. I'm really interested to see what the Japanese players bring. I think more than anything else, because. I think they're like a bit of an unknown entity to like the majority of them, Europe and America, you know, we can follow them so much, but outside of that, we don't really get to see too much of their, um, their progression through the season. So I think they'll be definitely ones to watch out for. No opponents, no one wants to play us tonight. So I'll just hop back on. Um, and what is the deal with the porridge? So the deal with the porridge is, okay. Um, the deal with the porridge is I did, um, I really like nutrition and I'm, uh, I'm big on being healthy and eating healthy and exercising and things like that. And um, I do have a treat now and then, but for the majority of the time I do try to stick by it. I think it's a, a very, good thing to like just generally help you out in day-to-day -day life you know your body is a temple almost you want it to perform as optimally as you possibly can and i feel like by you know feeding it the right things and looking after it you, your brain will work better you, you just generally yourself will work better but anyway that's beside the point i got um into the idea that i would do um kind of a nutritional video for vgc players for what they can eat in the mornings for breakfast and stuff like that so i did this video and um one of the breakfast things the best thing that i kind of recommend for people going to events in the morning was eating porridge and then it's kind of rolled on from there and um a lot of the uk guys find it hilarious i think it's nice it's all it's all a good fun but um yeah they like they any time there's anything to do with porridge I get brought up into the conversation if you guys haven't seen the video you can go over and watch it on the YouTube channel slight plug there but um, it is quite interesting though but that's the the story behind the porridge and uh, Matt Durrell now is kindly gracing my days with these videos which I do really love they're great I mean they do make me laugh when I see them I don't know if you guys have seen them on Twitter but he does these little like meme sketches with porridge stuff it's really good but We'll get on to that in a minute because we have our next opponent. What have they got? Salamence, Landerus T, Cresselia, Aegislash, Tapu Coco, and Gastrodon. So, what are we going to do here? We have not got much time at all. Mm. I think the Aegislash is going to be a bit of an issue here. Um, got like literally 10 seconds. Let's go, Guardi. Top. T Tar and excadrill let's lock him with that this might not be the best six to bring and i just missed the follow i'm super sorry super sorry whoever it was welcome uh who am i rooting for worlds um sola i don't know really they've got a few players that i'd love to do well um i've got the the uk guys um obviously will um, Jamie, Ben, I'd really love them all to like William Tansy, Jamie Boy, Ben Kiriaki. I'd love to see them do well, and I'll always root for them as well. Um, Marcus is another person I'd love to see do well. I think, um, I think out of everyone that I kind of would like to win, Marcus is someone I'd love to see win worlds. He's, uh, I feel like he's kind of had so many good results over the past few seasons it just feels like he needs to kind of plateau and just take the title he does he really deserves to and he's such a nice person as well like if you guys have met him you'll know that he's like he's one of the most genuine people we meet he's just um yeah he's great so i, I would love to see marcus win i'll get into this in a sec i'll just play a turn so we've got salomon's Cresselia here um it's probably mega mens isn't it um so is it gonna protect? I don't know if it'll protect though, will it? That's the thing. We could just go high. Let's be safe. Let's go hyper voice and just go fake out into the ments here. Mega evolve with our Gardevoir as well. Um, Aaron Zeng is another one. I, I like. I love Aaron. He's just again. He's just another genuinely like absolutely amazing guy. So um, I think he's capable of winning worlds. Um, it's just about whether he has the run on the day or not. It would be amazing to see him win. Um, 
So that's another one. Wolfie, I wouldn't mind seeing Wolf win it again. It would be nice to see him get the, the double and then push next year for the triple. You never know. The thing is, though, there's so many good players now. It's just hard to, to kind of identify the ones that you want to win. You kind of... It's, uh, it is really difficult. Um, oh, what's going on? Oh, we've got to, got to switch out. My eject button's activated. Uh, I'll bring in Tito. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, Poker Alex as well. Alex Gomez is another one who like, I'd love to see do well. Uh, the list goes on, though. There's just too many players. Um, is Barry going to Worlds? I don't think Barry's going to Worlds this year. Um, I'm pretty sure he's not. So, um, which is a shame because Barry's another player that you can kind of put up where they're up there with the the highest of caliber players. Um, but I don't think Barry's gone this year, so which is a bit unfortunate. Marcus, yes, uh, I would like to see Baz or Marcus win this year. Yeah, I like they're two people that I wouldn't mind seeing at all win it. But I don't know if Baz has got. I don't know if Baz got his invite in the end. That's the one thing I'm not too sure about. And this Salamence doesn't appear to be mega, because you would have thought it would have mega maybe already. Um, I'm kind of tempted to go, oh, what, what, what did my opponent have in the back? Uh, I don't really want to go Trick Room just yet, because I feel like uh, if we go Trick Room now, my opponent keeps firing off Icy Winds as well. I think what I'll do is just go for a Protect, and I'm going to fire off an Ice Beam into the Salamence slot. I'm kind of scared of it Mega Evolving and going for like a double edge or something into the Gardevoir. So we're going to see it Mega Evolve now. Let's see what it does. And we'll just protect Guardi because Guardi's going to be quite important for later on in the match. Salamence double edge. Yeah, so we call that nicely. Get a light screen. So my opponent actually playing around it. That's a really nice shout from the Cresselia there. This ice beam, I don't think, gonna take the Salamence down now. Hmm. No. Okay. But the Salamence is definitely in rock slide range now. That's the thing. So you've got to kind of. Hmm. Could bring an Excadrill. Excadrill will be able to easily take a double edge or a hyper voice. Let's just go for a rock slide with Salamence. That should kind of wrap it up there. Um, Lou, hi. Sorry I missed you there. I'm too wrapped up in the game. How are you doing? You all right? Uh, Mad Captain, I've been the 10 minute tournament tips video. Yeah, you found it. So that's where the Mad Captain, that is where the porridge comes from. That is where the porridge comes from. So you see another double edge from the Salamence into the extra drill. We'll eat that up pretty easily. Salamence takes a bit of recoil. See, icy wind from the crest. But I don't mind this too much because I, I don't know if we're going to be keeping Excadrill on the field. We might withdraw it and bring it in a bit later. So it was just to take that double edge. We didn't want to bring in Hitmontop in that situation because Hitmontop, we would lose it. So even on minus two, the double edge will probably take us down. Um, and there we go with Procon Berry on the Cresselia. So. Um, Ahmed, Wolfie has had a sad season this year, I feel. Um, I guess yes and no. I mean, he, he was a bit unlucky in London. He made day two, he did pretty well. I think he finished around, he was quite close to the top eight, I'm sure, with his team. Um, but yeah, he hasn't, he hasn't really done as much as what you would expect him to do but maybe that's because he hasn't had to because he's got his he's got his invite for worlds and maybe he's keeping all his best kind of ideas just close you know keeping them under wraps until worlds so we don't really know he's the kind of player that, that would just bust out a performance at worlds after having a quiet season so you can't really um underestimate him at all um and i don't know if you guys saw him uh, the US internationals, I think he was on stream a couple of times, once or twice, and um, I don't know. I think I'd still put my money on Wolf to come in and do a really good job. So we've got Landorus on the field now, uh, Cresselia. We've got to remember that that um, light screen is still up though. I'm going to just switch out Excadrill, reset that icy wind that we've had onto us, and just bring in him on top, getting Intimidate onto the Landorus here. 
I can't expect my opponent to really go for a sidekick into that slot. We'll probably see just an icy wind and maybe an earthquake come out from the Landorus. But at least this next turn we've got fake out support from top. Yeah, there's just the earthquake. And let's see what the crest goes for. Yeah, so Baz didn't get his invite. Thanks for confirming that, Lou. And I've just totally missed what the Crest did there. What is the Cresselia doing here? Cresselia's going for Hidden Power. So is that Hidden Power Ground? or It has to be, because you can't get Hidden Power fighting. It's still, like, illegal. Right, so we just go... Huh. Let's think about this a bit. Because we could just fake out... Like, if the Landorus is scarfed, it, it might be. Probably is likely to be. We could get some damage off onto it with a fake out and just go for an ice beam into it. We have revealed the ice beam already, but the Cresselia's not really putting too much pressure on. And that hidden, like, hidden power from Cress isn't going to be doing too much damage either way. We do see the Landorus withdraw, though. We force it out. So we're just going to get a fake out and an ice beam onto the Gastrodon. And we see a psychic come out from the Cresselia. Which again, I don't mind too much because this means that we'll, we will be able to just bring in a God of War or a Excadrill. So, it's fine. Get a little bit of chip damage. Sandstorm does subside though. Hmm. Let's think, what do we want to do here? We do have a Tech Rage left, but I think probably God of War is better to bring in in this situation. And we could go for the, the Assurance combination now. Which would be quite nice. Because we've got Assurance on Tita, so we could go Hyper Voice and Assurance onto the Gastrodon, which should pick up the KO onto it. And as long as it's not like a really speedy Gastrodon, um, we should be able to pick up the KO there. So. Uh, Gigalith. Lou, you love Gigalith. <laughs> we should have a, a special Gigalith tribute. So we see an icy wind come out from the crest. We're gonna get that speed drop on both our Pokemon. Get the hyper voice off though. If this doesn't pick up the KO on Cresselia, which it won't, we can maybe go for a trick room now. The light screen does wear off. We're gonna probably see another light screen. Um, hmm. We could just go for the hyper voice again. We're probably gonna see another light screen come out. I'm kind of tempted just to go for her. Uh, this is awkward because if the Gastrodon has Earth Power, it's still, it is going to be doing quite a bit of damage to Titar. Hmm, and it is going to be at speed in us. Thing is, I can't really... Like, if I bring Excadrill in for the Titar now, it's just going to be sacking it. But we haven't got the special defensive boost that we had before on T-Tar. I mean, I could probably go for a Trick Room. Yeah, it's not a bad idea. Go Trick Room and bringing extra drill. Sack the extra drill. And then set the Trick Room up. Get T-Tar back in. Get the Sand back up. Yeah, there's the light screen. So let's see what this, this Gastrodon goes for. Hmm. There's the Earth Power. Okay. So let's see if this was the right decision. Like, we should be under speed in the Cresselia now, but I don't know if we're going to be... Like, we definitely will with Titar, so we can potentially Rock Slide and Hyper Voice. I don't know if we'll be under speeding the Gastrodon with God of War though, that's the only thing. Will we be? Um, 33. Nah, I don't think we will. Tito probably still under speeds it. So we could just go Hyper Voice and Rock Slide. Probably the best option just to go for that. So let's see. There's the Earth Power. Tito able to take that a lot better with the sand up though. Do you get a special defensive drop though? Which 
is an which isn't ideal at all. Um, but the hyper voice should finish the crest off and do a good chunk to the, the gastrodon. Okay, we get a crit on the gastrodon. That is super unfortunate for my opponent. Super unfortunate. Because otherwise it would have been super difficult to close this match out. Uh, we would have had to protect the T-Tar the next turn because of the, the Earth Power kind of coming in. And then we would have had the Landorus to deal with as well. And it is full health Landorus. The light screen is up as well. Um, so we get super lucky there. Which is super unfortunate for my opponent. Right. Let's go for a Hyper Voice and an Ice Beam. And I think that combination should be enough to, to, to finish up the Landorus. Right, I can, yeah, Captain Gastrodon, still have nightmares of that from Liverpool, yeah, Gastrodon is such a pain to play against if you don't have like the right tools on your team to take it down, wow, the Landers actually takes both attacks, the light screen, and Ga Gaudi's going to go down to sand damage, so we're going to lose this, should have went for... I don't know if we should have went for the Psychic there. Because a single hot target Hyper Voice is probably more powerful with the, the extra boost. But to be fair, we didn't really deserve to win that match anyway. So I don't mind. Good game to my opponent. Um, so let me catch up with the um, the chat a little bit here. We've got a new follower. Will R VGC. Hey Will, that's great to have you on the channel. How are you doing? So let's catch up with the chat, guys, because I feel like I've kind of neglected it for a little bit. And that's the main reason why we're doing this, so I can kind of have a chat, hang out with all of you guys while I'm doing this, because that's the, the most fun thing about it. So what we're doing, you guys seem to be getting on ground without without me here. It's fine. I don't mind. Uh, well, the CC streams with over 200 viewers that had, like, chat. Not even half as active as this one. That's amazing to, like, hear that, like, that we've you've been in streams with over 200 viewers and not even half as active chats you know what though guys i honestly think like the like the pokemon community is one of the best communities um in the video game um like the whole video game scene i really think like we have such a special community uh it's just like it's so friendly it's so nice it's open everyone kind of gets on everyone bounces ideas off each other it's great and like especially on the channel and things like that i feel so privileged to have like such a group of amazing people on the channel and like coming over to twitch as well it's like amazing you guys are like brilliant and uh i love that like you're just so interactive as well with everything so it just makes it so like it is like i can't lie like doing the channel and doing like um the streams and things like that and building teams and stuff like that is like a lot of hard work because i have a, a day job as well but it's so worthwhile i get so much enjoyment out of it especially when you guys get involved as well it makes it like amazing to do and i, I just love doing it and uh the main reason for me starting the channel and doing all of this in the first place was to try and make it easier for new newer players coming into VGC to get into it and uh, hopefully pass on some knowledge as well that I've got somewhere stuck in this this head of mine to, to, to even like players that have been playing for a long time to kind of help them out with maybe little bits of information here and there that they might not have thought about before so that was the main reason but you guys like i say make it amazing so it's uh, it is awesome but i'd love to hear what you guys want to see on the streams if you want to see more vgc oriented content if you want to see more bass but doubles or just mixed up in general or if you want to see best of threes like one idea i had to do i am um, on the stream was to do um like viewer battles as well so we'll do a stream in a couple of weeks and we'll have all of you and i'll say right who wants to battle and you just post your your friend code or whatever privately or on here and then we'll hook up and we'll have like an hour and a half of just battling you guys and i think that would be a lot of fun and i'll make sure i've got like a, a massive variety of teams who can change it up and stuff like that so um i don't know i just want to hear what you guys want to see because that's like all i that's all i'm really doing is making sure that you guys get content you want to want to view and so we can hang out more so that's it well, hey dude, completely forgot you were streamed today, so just got here. Hi, amazing that you're here, great to have you here. 
What's my captain? My team had no good answers to Gastro, really my own fault. The thing is though, when like going into Liverpool, was Gastrodon really gonna be something that you were kind of prepping for so much? I think at that stage in the metagame, it's something that you could kind of maybe um, not, not really tech for too much. Unless you're running rain, obviously, then you really do need to have a tech for it because it just shuts you down. But I think in general, um, it's not something you see so commonly and it's just then down to just matchups, isn't it? And it's bad luck if you run into one because I don't know how many people actually would have run Gastrodon at Liverpool. So that's just sometimes just down to like you can't fit it in your team and um, you kind of have to forego that sometimes. I mean, I had a really bad matchup against um, Tapu Koko Nailigo. That was something I completely... Um, decided to not tech against them, my team and I think I played about four of them through the tournament so my tournament there was pretty hard at Liverpool but uh, you can't complain it's just how you do it sometimes how you prepare sometimes and it's just about learning from those that, that kind of preparation I think and then just adapting it to, to be a bit better the next time you kind of go around to a tournament and just analyze everything on a whole and then settle with with the team i think it's really hard this year though um especially vgc 17 because it's a bit like it's not like other years where you can kind of just pull down this list and say right these are the the common teams these are everything that i'm going to see these are all the, the archetypes of teams that i'm going to see and i need to counter all of them you just can't there's no way you can counter everything and um, so i think the best route in is creating your own strategy within in your team and then trying to execute it in a match and then there's obviously things that will come up against that and it's just making sure that you have answers to try and get around those things that um that can be a bit of an issue let me just flick back a minute what we got um a good stream title not be bad maybe something with porridge ha <laughs> i can hear you laughing at that now nils <coughs> Um, fight melee. I'm not doing any, um, yeah, Roberto, I'm not going to do any um, matches against anyone today because we're going to be wrapping up pretty soon. But um, I, we will definitely, like, maybe not next week, but the week after, we'll do a special stream. So it'll just be like me playing you guys or you guys playing each other, and we'll see if there's some way we can kind of feature it on here. I don't know, but um, we'll see. More battle spot doubles, please. Yeah. Um, Daniel would like to see a Q&A video. That would be pretty cool. I could definitely sort that out. I'd uh, I'd be definitely up for that. Um, sorry, Roberto. I feel bad. I feel bad. But we'll definitely. You'll be one of the first people that will um will get um to battle when we do this video in a couple of weeks time. Roberto for following as well. Great to have you here. So we've got our final probably opponent of the day. And who else is this? bell keeps ringing so we've got oh, I can't pronounce that I'm so bad I can't even read it like I think I need to change the color of the font because it's like super hard to see whoever you are thank you so much for following it's amazing to have you here with everyone else um right so what we're gonna do we've got Dan and he's got a team of Alakazam, Sylvian, Haxorus is it Haxorus? I don't know from just thinking of hacks and just putting something on the end of it. Toxapex, Delmise, and Arcanine. Hmm. This seems like a really strange, like, mix of Pokemon. Gardevoir is going to be super good here. Uh, Toxapex, it hits for good damage. Haxorus, it does. Uh, it's not going to take too much from the Alakazam. have to be careful for Shadow Balls from that and the, the Sylveon. Uh, the Delmise is going to be a bit of an issue. Let's go with Guardi. Um, hmm. We could just go sand lead though, to be honest. But we've run out of time. I can't believe it. I keep looking at the video on the screen of the, the, the actual live stream to make sure it's not lagging or anything. And I'm looking at the timer on there and then it's just started in game. <laughs> Such a fail. Rip, rip, rip. Um, I don't have Battlespot doubles team and not plan on getting team. 
Yuri, what we'll do for the, the, the viewer matches as well, we can literally play VGC, we can play Battle Spot Doubles, we can play anything, like anything. It doesn't matter, it doesn't need to be locked into one um, format if we're doing the viewer battles, but I think it would be cool to kind of do it one week. So and we can maybe do that like once or once a month or once every other month, depending on like schedule stuff. Um, so we see my opponent, they're leading off with Alakazam, Delmise. Huh, okay. And we're leading off with God of War and Excadrill, which is a super, super strange lead here. Um, Delmise is putting a lot of pressure on the God of War with the, um, the Steelworker ability that it's got and the anchor shot. So we do need to be a bit careful with that. I think I'm going to protect Guardi, switch in. Ha! Ah. Hmm, this is pretty difficult. Yeah, I'm going to have to switch Excadrill out. I'm going to bring in Titar. Might not be the best idea ever, because if we take a, a power whip or something, it's not going to be ideal. We haven't really brought the best Pokemon to this match, I don't think. I think we just clicked in. We have got the Sand Core, but it's going to take a little bit of manoeuvring round to get it kind of on the field. Um, Nigel, the saving grace at least is there is a QR code that it can use. Yeah, that's true. Yuri, you could use QR codes like Nigel's suggesting. That would be that would be a way around it if you did want to play the Battle Spot doubles. And we can always, I think I did put this team up on, as a QR card, I'm pretty sure it's linked in one of the videos, so you could even use this team and we could maybe create something else. So we see Alakazam protect, God of War protects, what does the Dalmais do? Dalmais just protected, so that's, it's a bit of a dead turn. Right, so I think I'm going to preserve Zapdos for later on, I'm going to switch it up. Um, Preserve God of War for later on. I'm going to switch it out to Zapdos and I'm going to go for. Hmm, we could go Hyper Voice Assurance. I'm pretty sure we might outspeed the Delmise. Yeah, let's just do that. Let's try and get this Assurance combination off at least once today. Hopefully, if this Delmise isn't too heavily invested we should be able to pick up the KR. We do see my opponent switch out the Alakazam for the Arcanine. Is going to get the Intimidate off but I think with the Assurance boost we should even intimidate it. As long as we go first we should be able to pick up the KR onto the Delmise. Wow Hyper Voice just does so much damage. No we are going to see a Bloom Doom so this is into the T-Tar which is a bit of a shame because we're going to lose Probably T Tar here, yeah, you've got to imagine it's a T Tar. But I guess it's not too bad because it gives us a free switch into Excadrill this next turn. Yeah. Which is totally fine because we just take down the Arcanine. I don't think my opponent's got too much immune to ground. And the team, we can just hyper voice again because we know we're out speeding the, the Delmise with the Gardevoir. So it's not the worst situation in the world, he says. <sighs> so, hmm, a new funky business was going on when Eula will o wisps is on Gastrodon. <laughs> he will o wisps is on Gastrodon. Did you have Toxic on your team? Was that the reason that he did it, to get around the Toxic? That would make a lot of sense. Ahmed, I have a team that I'm doing so well with at the moment. I think Lee will be featuring it on the stream in the coming couple of weeks. Yeah, I will be definitely featuring it in the next couple of weeks on the stream. So as well, guys, if you've got teams you want to see featured, just let me know. Um, and I'm, I'm happy to feature any teams, even teams that you guys have built. It'd be really fun to get involved with those and, and just test them out on the stream. So do pass them over if you've got ideas and things for that. I'm just going to lock in with a Hyper Voice here and go for a Tech Rage with Into the Arcanine. We have another follower. Who is it this time? Glum VGC. Hi. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining us. So we're going to get the Tech Rage off. I think it's going to be, I'm pretty sure, I think I've missed the... the... No, no, no. The Arcanine didn't protect, so that's pretty good. We see the Delmise protect, though. So that's all right. Um, Will, I can't even say that I had too many bad matchups in Birmingham. I think I just got outplayed too many times. Huh, that's like something that's like, I think, you know, I think that's like really like 
like it shows like such progressive progression as a player being able to say that because a lot of players would turn around and make excuses and this isn't a bad thing and i'm not attacking anyone by saying this but a lot of players and like will this is a like saying this as a player this is like super cool because i think the fact that you can kind of say I did get outplayed rather than say, oh, I was hacked or something went wrong or this didn't go right. That's like like the first step in making like the next step into like improving. And then we, all you need to do really is look at that event. You probably know this already. I'm just repeating it. Um, and sorry if I am. But um, all you need to do is just look at like where you went wrong in those matches and maybe just think what you could have done a little bit differently to, to kind of just amend things a little bit. But like props to to like saying that because like a lot of new players or even like players I know that have been playing for years wouldn't um, wouldn't admit that they get outplayed by things and it's a big step I think being a VGC player just admitting that so um, props and if you ever want um, to to get together and do any practice or analysis on anything like that on teams and things like that just let me know i'm happy to offer any help that i can ha ah, so qr codes are cool but not a big fan of it yuri you're not a big fan of qr codes f450 hey lee hi hi how are you i'm good thanks i'm good the stream's going all right i think i'm trying to like muddle through doing battles and the chat at the same time. So what have we got in front of us? We've got a Mega Alakazam and we've got, it is Haxorus. So we can go for, the, the Alakazam just protected the last turn. I'm kind of scared that it's got like Focus Blast or something. Um, let's go for Hyper Voice and just go for that Iron Head again into the Alakazam. We're going to be outspeeding it with Excadrill. So I don't know if it's going to be enough. Wow, we don't actually outspeed it in the sand. Oh, that's because it got the sand rush ability. I think it got it gets traced, doesn't it? So that's fine. Oh wow, Haxorus gets poison jet. Okay, that does take us down, which is a bit unfortunate. But we do have Zapdos in the back, so we'll be fine. Alakazam. Huh, this might not be ideal actually. I think what we'll do is go for a Tailwind now. Um, with Zapdos protect extra drill, and then we can just earthquake and T-Bolt, I guess, the next turn. So let's just do do that and try and wrap this last game up for the win. Yeah, um, I think it's an excellent resource. Nigel, I totally agree with you. I love the QR code system. I think it's brilliant. I guess it's not for everyone, but um, I think it's such a, um, such a big step from the last generation with, with getting teams and things for like new players and testing out teams. And it's like, it doesn't take any of your time testing these teams out, which is like the big thing, I think, which is like my big appeal to it. So there we see the Haxorus go for a poison jab. Alakazam protects. Yeah, we do get the Tailwind off. Um, here we can just go for a Hidden Power Ice into the Haxorus and just an Earthquake with our Excruder. It looks like that Haxorus might be banded or scarfed and it's locked into Poison Jab. So if it is, it's not going to be able to touch Excadrill, which should mean we'll be able to lock this game up pretty easily. So we get the Earthquake off. And there's the Hidden Power. I don't know if this will kill. Will it? It does. Okay. So, very good game to my opponent, and we end on a win, which is perfect. So, yeah, we're going to have to wrap things up in a minute, guys. I have uh, to shoot off out, but um, I've had an amazing time with you all. Let me just flick through these last messages so I don't make sure I'm not missing anyone. Um, yeah, I guess I was more disappointed I didn't get any CP at Liverpool after doing well at Birmingham. Mad Captain, yeah. I was super disappointed. I was the same boat as you. Like, I can't believe I, like, I just went there to get some CP to get a head start for next season. But at the same time, what you've got to think is the new season hasn't really started yet. We, we're not even into the new season yet. So, although the, any head start would have been nice, it depends what your goals are set for, for going forward. Um... If you just want that day one world's invite it's still totally obtainable and um, so i wouldn't worry too much just concentrate on your next event and try and um, just improve on that and you definitely will you've had 
good finishes before so you can definitely do it again just take Liverpool as just a learning curve and then just try and move on and just kind of improve from there Yuri, my worst matchup with my Liverpool team was Smeagol. I thought I had a bad rain matchup too, but it was actually good. Then I checked. Then I chalked. Oh, that's a shame. That is annoying. And sometimes, you know, when you're at tournaments and things like that, there's a lot of factors that people don't kind of put into, like, a tournament result or how people do in a tournament, I think, you know. Have you had enough sleep the night before? Like, that is a huge one. Like, I've been to events before and I've had, like, like at Liverpool, for instance, I had a terrible night's sleep the night before that and I performed probably to reflect my night's sleep. I think that's got a big thing to do with it. Obviously, eating well, making sure you're fed and drinking enough and hydrated and all that does play an effect into it. Because that all affects your mood as well. So, And your mood does affect how you play, uh, your decision making and things like that. So it's all linked. So it's again it's just one of those things where you just got to kind of learn from it and try and improve on it going into the next thing and Smeagol was just Smeagol's ridiculous Smeagol is such a good pokemon in this format because people just don't prepare for it well enough i think and there's some you can't prepare well enough for all the Smeagol sets out there i think tapu koko or tapu fini do a good job of dealing with it but then you still have to worry about the follow me variants that can be an issue as well and you've got to remember that they can learn uh, like you can learn any move in the format as well which makes it a bit difficult to play around i mean look like marcus piloted his tapu bulu smeagol team at the us internet and he did so well with it and i think the the way he played the smeagol in that team just just really helped everything else out in that team and like if you don't have an answer for the smeagol it can just run through you and then paired with what he had paired with it it just made it really difficult poker champ Yo guys, hey Lee, sorry for being late, fell asleep after dinner. <laughs> That's fine, it's great to have you here. We're actually just wrapping up though, which is a massive shame. Um, but thanks so much for stopping by. I feel like I should play another game just to kind of keep, make sure you all guys, you got, everyone gets a little bit of a, a viewing of something. Um, but we'll be doing the stream every week now. So I think what I'm gonna do is do a Thursday evening, every week stream. We'll do an hour, an hour and a half every week and we can just mix up the content and as we go further and further on with the streams, if they get more, like, if they're, they're getting bigger and things like that, we'll maybe look at increasing them. But at the moment, just with kind of my time schedule with the YouTube channel as well, I think we're kind of just going to, I think it'd be nice just to keep the, the stream to one day a week at the minute and we'll see how we go. But it's super fun because I love hanging out with all of you guys. It's always it's always great to do. So it's something I want to do more of in the future. And, you know, we might do the odd weekend where we have a stream on the weekends or if we've got a loose, uh, like a spare night or something like that, we can always hop on and do some streaming. Um, but there's lots of ideas going forward. So hopefully we can uh, uh, keep some keeps on carrying on and you guys keep on enjoying it as well because that's the main thing i guess nils i think you forgot the porridge for liverpool regs or maybe i didn't say yeah i didn't i actually had breakfast in the hotel that morning they didn't have porridge so i didn't so that could have been a reason why i didn't do too well either but you never know um so what have we got haxorus yes yeah haxorus is really cool it's a really cool pokemon it did pretty well i'm pretty sure it made a top eight appearance at worlds in 2011 in black and white i'm pretty sure pretty sure one of the italian guys ran it it's pretty big in italy i'm pretty sure if you look back at results i talk too much i definitely talk too way too much um i just want to make sure i go through everyone i don't want to miss out any comments that anyone's left i feel really bad if i if someone's typed something i've missed it out so if i have I'm sorry, but I will try it. I'm just gonna do this quickly before you guys are gonna constantly type, so I keep, I'm never gonna end the stream. It'll just be an endless stream of text. But um, guys, I'd love to know, and um, before I do this, I'd love to know what you guys wanna see for next week on the stream. If you wanna see VGC, if you wanna see Battle Spot Doubles, um, if you wanna see a best of three against someone, if you wanna do viewer battles, QR code battles, whatever you want, just let me know and we'll, We'll take the majority vote and we'll do that next week. Um, I'm quite happy doing anything at the minute and it's nice. I think once we get into the new VGC season, we'll we'll really concentrate more on just doing VGC content. But as it's kind of coming to a close and we're kind of in between the end of the season and the start of the next one and Worlds coming up and stuff like that, we'll, we'll kind of just play around with whatever you guys would prefer to see most. 
Um, timing out is Lee's win condition. Timing out is always my win condition, Dan. You know too well that I always time out. It's super bad. I need to really kind of nail that down. I get too busy, like Neil says, I talk too much. So it's, um, it, 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 it always cuts into my time, but yeah. Um, that was a super fast Elmise, I think, uh, Roberto. It was kind of weird. That the whole team that we played was weird. I don't understand the um, the Alakazam protecting on some turns as well. So, I don't know. It was a cool team, but I mean, it was a bit strange, I guess. It'd be cool to get the pace spin of it and have a look at it. Abed, how to be a poker master according to Lee Provost. Yeah, time out, time out. Don't worry about the timer, just go with it. <laughs> and yeah, RT Tor is min speed as well. Um, but Delmise is like what base forty three or bot base forty five speed set, so it must have had some investment to add speed RT Tor, to be honest. Right. Let's see. And you're welcome, Will, anytime. Um I mean it, if you do want any sessions where we sit down and do team building or just practice and I'm just generally theorying together, I'm happy to do that when I've got time to do it. Oh, and thanks, Mad Captain. I, I, I want to make it a priority because I really, like, the one thing I do appreciate more than anything is, like, you guys actually coming to watch the stream. And I want to make it entertaining for you guys. So I want to, um, I want to make sure that I'm, like, at least giving you something back because it's, you're taking time to, to type out to me. So I want to make sure that I'm doing it for you guys as well. Um, it might be boring if this is an upload on the YouTube channel for people to watch at the end, but you know, it's not about everyone else watching it. It's about you guys that are here with me and that's no disrespect for anyone watching on the YouTube channel because I really appreciate you watching it, but I'd love you to come over and hang out on the streams. If you're watching the upload of this, because I will put this on the YouTube channel. Um, so it's just great hanging out with you guys. But what's, what's this? You keep talking, Lee, we'll catch up with the chat. I know I'm never gonna catch up with the chat. Promise in a few months time, Lee's Twitter is just covered in people's tweeting. Yeah, it will be, Nigel. There will be porridge everywhere. I might even end up with my own brand of porridge. That would be kind of cool, wouldn't it? I would love that. That would be great. Lee's Pokemon porridge. And we could have like Jason, you know, Irish Jason. He could be like a, a poster boy for it because he's never top cut a regional ever in his life before. And the first time he had porridge in a tournament morning, he top cut that event. And then that, that is going to be the, the outline, the tagline for the, the, um, the porridge. We could do that. It'd be funny, I guess. But yeah, <laughs> we should get a sponsor, Yuri. <coughs> um, right. A lot more LOL in Pokemon. And yes, I would love to get into this more, guys. I think it's going to be super interesting. Ultra Sun, Ultra Moon. We're going to get loads more LOL in Pokemon, I feel like it. And it's going to be amazing. I really hope the deck stays to a similar level to what it is now with just new uh, Alolan Pokemon coming in. But I'm not gonna get into that anymore because I really do need to shoot off, guys. Um, it's been absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for stopping by. Um, I've had like an absolute blast with you all. Let me know um, on Twitter, on YouTube, on here, what you wanna see next week and we'll sort it out so we'll be back. Um, I don't know if we're gonna do one on Tuesday. We might do a stream on Tuesday and Thursday. We'll see how it goes. I'll see what you guys' reaction is over on YouTube or on Twitter or anything like that. But like, it's been absolutely a pleasure, guys. It's awesome. I love hanging out with you. Um, hopefully you've enjoyed the stream. Thanks for taking the time to come by. And um, we'll be back for um, an episode of School of Hard Knocks over on the YouTube channel tomorrow. And then we'll have a little break over the weekend, but we'll be back on Monday to kind of continue on with that. So. Um, I will see you all, 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 all very soon. And um, yeah, just thanks for uh, stopping by. So until next time, guys, you take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.